Look at page 54. We'll kind of go through this together. You can write down the stuff that I write on the board there. Stupa, that first paragraph there. Page 54. Page 54. Everybody on page 54? Page 54. Laney, will you read that? <coughs> Mr. Monson finished grading this the test. He counted the number of tally marks in each word and recorded the count in the frequency column. For example, the table shows that nine students scored either 19, either 19 or 20 on the test. Frequency table is the way of pairing selected data. In this case, this Test scores is the number of times that selected data. Yeah, specify. So when you talk about um, yeah, frequency tables, usually when you see a frequency table, when you see a table, like the book says there, uh, it is a way of putting some data together. And this last one is usually the frequency. And instead of the word frequency, you could probably substitute the word how many. Um, because like this person, like the little graph there, you know, they did the number correct. There was 19 to 20. There was the number correct, 17 and 16, whatever it was there. And you used the tally marks to show, let's see, what was it? How many people? Yeah, tally marks gave us nine. So the frequency, how many times did, or how many people got 19 or 20 right, was nine. And how many people got 17 to 18 right? That is the frequency. Oh, seven. How many people got 15 or 16 right? What was that? Four. And the frequency is four there. Now, the reason that's important is because um, is because we're going to talk about taking a frequency table like this is and making a histogram. Did we do this to Graham last year? No. I think we did. Mm -hmm. Maybe we don't. Okay. And a histogram is a type of bar graph, except it's a special type. Just like you guys are special. Like you guys are special. <coughs> okay. It is a bar graph that shows frequency. And it's nothing more than the frequency table turned on its side. Turn table on side. And there are no spaces between the bars. And you'll see what I mean in just a second. No spaces between the bars. Maybe it won't make any sense to you too. Let me see if I can shrink this a little bit. This is kind of how a frequency table would look. Okay, I'm going to turn this like this, kind of rotate it. I should do that. I bet I can do that. Watch this. It won't look very pretty, but we'll do it. If you take this and turn it into a bar graph form, kind of squeeze there, isn't it? Yeah, we'll just leave it like that. Here is what it would look like. Here's my little frequency table here. Uh, the first bar, well, let me do this first. This side shows the frequency, how often something happens. So it would look like this. We'll start at 1. Here's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and this is the frequency, how many it occurred. The lines that go up and down are these right here. This would be the number of people, I suppose we should start with <coughs> that. 
these are the number of people that got 19 to 20 right. And this bar would be the number of people that got, what, 17 to 18, correct? 17 to 18. And this one would be the ones that got, what do I have there? 15 to 16? 15 to 16. So coloring in the bar, what color should we use? Oh, green. So how many people got 19 to 20? Nine. So you'd make a bar all the way up to here. Here is your bar that goes all the way to the top. That means that nine people got 19 to 20 right. How many people got 17 or 18 right? Seven. So that goes up to here. But notice, children, most bar graphs you see like spaces between the bars. With a histogram, there won't be. It'll just be increments like that and no space in between. How many people got 15 or 16? Four that goes to right here. And this would be your histogram. I'm going to pick there. I don't know if that helps you or not. But Now, children, I know that you're very excited about that, despite not showing it to me. <laughs> no, showing it after I asked for it is never as well. Take this piece of paper and we are going to walk you through how to make one. If you look at, I think it's on number eight in the book. Because it's not as easy as it looks. It was pretty easy when the book gives you all the information. But when you have the information and you've got to have to, you have to be the one to organize it, it takes a little bit of thought. And unfortunately for most sixth graders, a little bit of thought it takes a lot of trouble and time. So with me there. Are you taking down what I'm laying down here for you? I'm going to see if by the magic of this big board I can pull out that same piece of paper on my Oh, you guys are in luck with this. Six this is man. More than you'll ever know. down there, Samson. Sixth grade is there somewhere? Course one. Investigation five. No, that's not it. Investigation. Histogram and graph length. Watch this. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay. And then hopefully we get a Sabank. Give it time. There it is. is it there? No, there's no green line around the outside. Is it? You see a green line? You hear a spank? There it is. All right. So here we go. Can you see that? Sorry. Oh, I just had Okay, first things first. Take a look at problem number eight on page 55. It says, make a frequency table and a histogram for the following set of test scores. Now, lucky for you, they tell you the intervals to use. They tell you right there to use, and that's logical. Everybody that got in the 50s, everybody that got in the 60s, everybody. But sometimes you'd have to pick that up for yourself. So here is how it works. Um, you need to write those categories down. I hope there's enough of them. Is there? 90, 1, 2, 3, 4, is there 5 here? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Yeah. So your first one is going to be people that scored between 50 and 59. Next one is people that were between 60 and 69. 70 and 79. 80 and 89. And then 90, I guess we'll go through 100. I don't know if they said, they say 90 through 100 at the end? Well, what do you do about the guy that gets 100? 
Okay, so, and by the way, this would be the scores, test scores, I guess, that's our label. So here is where our little tally marks come into play. Uh, as you go through, you just put a tally mark for each score. So, maybe you can understand, where would, the first score was a 63, that goes here, so you put a tally mark. That's a tough one, huh? 75, so you put a tally mark. I will let you, on your own, to yourself, put the fill in the tally marks there. Maybe don't put the frequency number, because if you get one wrong, you'd have to erase it. So look at all those scores and put tally marks where they belong, please. Can you get one I'm laying down here? Mm -hmm. Let's see what you come up with. <coughs> so for 58, you put a tally mark here. If you don't get it, raise your hand and I'll come personally advise you. Fill in all of the tallies, please, with that information. How can you be erasing so much already, Jay? You should be about to done. It shouldn't take you too long for this. This be not terribly complicated. And then we'll see if we all agree. I'll give you another 30 seconds or less. Okay, maybe you should let's have your pick on your side of your books and go ahead and keep lifting that up to look at the scores. Coincidence? Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. All right, how many, uh, okay, how many did you get for 50 to 59? Two. Two. Are you agreeing on that? Yes. Uh, so our frequency is two. How many for 60 to 69? Brooklyn? Nice. Three. I'm guessing that's three. <laughs> So our frequency is three. Everybody agrees on that? Yeah. 70 is the 79, Keith? Uh, four. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Four. 80 to 89? Grace? Seven. Everybody agrees? Yeah. Seven. And then 90s to 99 to our hundreds. M? Four. Okay. Four? Yeah. Everybody agree? Yeah. Okay, so there it is. This would be your frequency table. Now, we are going to make a histogram. How do you do that? Um, first thing, let's do the labeling here. And remember, when you do the histogram, what you're doing is you're really, you're just taking this frequency table and turning it like this so that these actually become bars that are going up. Okay, so what do you suppose our bottom label is? What are we talking about here? Bottom label would be this stuff here. What is that? Good? Like yeah, what do we call that? Yeah, they are numbers. But what numbers representing what? What did it say in here? It says, for the following set of what? What are those things, Grace? Scores? Yeah, they're test scores. Wait, let's not, let's put it actually under here because we need to work with some of this. Test the scores. And then the label over here would be frequency. You know, what would we call this thing? Scores on math test, I guess, would be scores on test. Scores on test. So, here is what you have to think about. How many different ranges of scores are listed here? One, two, three, four, 
5, that means we're going to have 5 bars going up, which means we need to cut this into 5 equal pieces. Now, you probably don't have your rulers there or whatever, so, but they should be kind of straight lines up. I'm just going to draw a really skinny one so I can see them there. Try to do as best I can here. I don't know. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay, and then we need to label those. I suppose I should try to get a little bigger so that I can see it there. What is my labels going to be on there? This first column is what score usually goes from lowest to highest. So this would be the 50s to 59s, 60 to 69s, 70 to 79, 80 to 89, and then 90. I'm putting my 100 down there because what happens if somebody actually does get up? And then what you have to think about next, children, is here are your frequency lines. Will it work to have each one stand for one? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do we have any numbers that are higher than eight in frequency? What's the highest one? Seven? Mm -hmm. So you can leave them all as one. Otherwise, you'd either have to put a little break line here and say that your graph doesn't start at zero on the bottom, or you could make this work five, 10, 15, 20, whatever you want. So you're going to want to label this as one, two, three, four, five, six. And the frequency here would be the number of students that scored whatever. Number of students, that's your frequency. And then we can actually fill it in. Let's go with a nice color of what? Orange. So how many people did 50 to 59? What was our, what was our thing down there? How many? Two. two. So you're going to co color up to two. There is your first frequency. And again, remember there's no spaces between these bar graphs. How many folks did 60 to 69? Three. Three. So that one gets colored up to three. Seventy to seventy-nine. Four. Four. Listen to the pencils go. Eighty to eighty-nine. That was the big seven. Mm -hmm. oh, Last one we get a score, wasn't it? Yep. 490 to 100. And then you have, ladies and gentlemen, the world's best frequency table. Yes. yes. Now, if you look at the book, they actually still have like a line where you can actually see like the chart go up. Just so you see a nice division there. And then, ladies and gentlemen, you are very, very close. Let's see what else we got. I'm not sure you want to see this, probably. Later. Perfect. Now, forging ahead there. 
ladies and gentlemen. What is a survey? Well, if you have to take a survey from the book, Elijah, it says. From the book, Elijah, it says. Yeah, a way of collecting data, a lot of times people give you a piece of paper that asks you some questions on it. It says, rather than collecting data from every member of a population, a survey might focus on only a small part of the population called a sample. From that sample, conclusions are formed about the entire population. Now that the presidential elections are coming up here, okay, they make projections about who is going to win this or that based on surveys, but in, in presidential camp elections, they don't call them surveys, they call them what? Anybody know? Huh? Yeah, they poll people. Okay, now they don't call every single person people. What they do is they call like, you know, maybe they'll call 500 random people, and they're assuming that if you call 500 random people, it'll be proportionate across the entire you know, world, United States, state, whatever it is. In other words, if you're picking just people randomly, you should get the same proportion as if you pick everybody in the state. Now, is that always true? Not necessarily. Take a look at the next little paragraph here. Somebody want to read that for me? Maddie? Yeah, or Mrs. Patterson. Mrs. Patterson's class a survey of a survey of a number of students to determine what is the score for those four students to the north. Surveys participants were given six different scores from which to choose. The sur surveyors displayed the results of the frequency table shown on the following page. All right, and it says from the frequency table, Mrs. Patterson's student constructed a bar graph to display the results there. Now notice, they did a bar graph there. You really can't. Usually histograms are when you do like an interval of things. Notice how the test scores were from 50 to 59. This was just over a specific thing. How many people like basketball, bowling, football, softball, table tennis, which is my personal favorite, and volleyball. The questions they had, um, it says, since 16 out of selected basketball is their favorite sport, basketball was a choice of 16% because it is exactly 100. Which sport was the favorite about of about one-fourth of the students surveyed? Which one of those is about one-fourth of all 100? Carol? That would have to be what percent? About 25%. Correct. Softball. Which sport was the favorite of the girls who were surveyed? Your choice is A, softball, B, volleyball, C, basketball, or D, cannot be determined from the information given. Isabel says, how do you know that so many girls like softball? Huh? <laughs> you can't tell because they didn't, they didn't tell you. Boys can like softball. Uh, what else did they say there? How might changing the sample group change the result of the survey? What would you have to be sure about in your sample group? What if your sample group was only girls? Would that be a fair representation of the school? Do you think that would change in here? Like if uh, Ms. Shum said, uh, let's take a look at what our favorite PE things are, and I'm only going to take a sample of the girls. Would that be fair to the boys? No. What is that called? When you can, Because you can do that, and politicians do that all the time, too. What is it called when you take a survey, but it's not a fair survey? For example, if you said, okay, I'm going to take a... I'm going to take a presidential survey of all the people coming out across Lutheran Church, and that's going to be my representation of the state of Illinois. Would that be a fair survey or not? Yes. Why is it not, Keith Stewart, a fair survey? Because we are all Christians. Okay, because Christians probably, as a general rule, have a different opinion of who they want for candidates as would many other people in the state. For example, issues of abortion, 
um, you know, gay marriage and things like that, you are going to get a higher sampling of people who are against those things coming out of the church than you would if you just went to Jewel. If I took that same survey at Jewel, would that be a pretty much a fair survey? Would you say that the question you have to ask yourself, would just about any type of people, is there any specific people that go to Jewel that don't, as opposed to people that don't go to Jewel? Are there, you know, that sort of thing? Would that be a fair sampling if you went to Jewel? Yeah. Or what if you went downtown Chicago and just took people that were walking down the sidewalk? Is there a bias that could be on people that walk down the sidewalks? Yeah. Well, they'd probably be business people, or they could be homeless. You might be able, you might get a smattering of both. You know what I'm saying. You ever been downtown Chicago? You can see just about anything there. All right. Unfortunately, sixth grade, we have run out of time. Aww.